Hello, Mr. Gordon. Okay, so my today's topic is uh, it is scientific, and I understand that uh, after yesterday's evening at the end of the conference, uh, you're tired, so I'll try being as gentle as possible with such a topic. Uh, so I'm going to talk about, uh, uh, not about myself, about uh, uh, optimization, optimization of uh, generalization. So last time I was here in Riga a few years ago, I was doing some short introduction what generalization uh, is, but uh, they will repeat very shortly what that is, uh, is that uh, if we want to create uh, to graphically correct uh, maps, so for middle scales, uh, we have to create uh, a different data set out of our initial one uh, large scale uh, data set. Right? Because otherwise we will have too much details uh, and it will be uh, either Google way of uh, just skipping the data, uh, showing nothing, or open map Garka way of uh, showing what they have and basically that them as not, not, uh, not a map. So Google and open map Garka look at that middle scale just as an you know, overview. Uh, so introduction into zooming in into a uh, larger scale. But that's not how maps should be done on uh, middle scales. So there is a process called uh, generalization. Uh, and uh, that is something which, uh, uh, to my knowledge, all national mapping agencies uh, are doing. Uh, we have some greenhouse who are creating uh, maps would also be uh, doing it. So everybody is doing that. And Everybody is uh, used to do that uh, manually. This is what photographers would be doing. But now, uh, because uh, uh, the data is changing uh, very fast, right? In open the data that is changing uh, every minute or so, and this uh, requirement to do generalization is uh, we want to do it as fast as possible and as soon as uh, possible. So it will be. Uh, Small of the lab before changing the data to middle scale maps as, uh, uh, as possible. Right? But the problem is that uh, so you want to do it uh, automatically, right? Because if the person will be doing it, uh, will take <laughs> too much time. Uh, so those algorithms are pretty uh, complex and they <coughs> require a lot of time and uh, a lot of resources. Because for generalization, you have to you take one object and you see what objects are around it and decide what, how you want to morph that object into something else so that it be suitable for the scale you want. And usually, we're calculating it for uh, two, three, four additional scales from uh, initial one. So it takes a lot of time and a lot of resources like CPU, uh, memory, and uh, and, so. uh, if, and if you want to uh, Higher quality generalization because currently the uh, approach is that uh, uh, enemies want to do generalization, but we understand that uh, it's currently not possible to do uh, exactly the same as human photographer would do. So we just go, it's, uh, okay, let's have what we have. But if we go to higher quality generalization, it will require even more time, even more uh, resources. And as I said, uh, we want to update it uh, as soon as possible, so many times uh, a day or something. So we have complex tasks, large requirements, and we want to run it uh, almost constantly. So you see we have a big problem uh, here. And uh, this is not a new topic. Uh, this is, as I said, uh, in each, in each uh, graphic conferences, uh, at least international ones, uh, are talking about this topic. And uh, if we basically look, look at this formula, which uh, converts my presentation to a scientific one, there's no formula. Uh, but uh, as I said, I'm just for the few trying to be general. The formula is very simple. So the time it takes to uh, perform a generalization is basically the time takes to generalize one object multiplied by the number of objects, right? Simple. <laughs> so most of the efforts uh, which I've seen uh, are concentrating on this one. So uh, you're adding uh, more CPUs, more memory, uh, improving your algorithm of generalization so it runs uh, faster than one uh, single object. And uh, most papers uh, 
uh, talk about reducing this one, because as you see, it's multiplication, so reducing this one uh, is uh, improving the result uh, as fast as improving that one, right? So a lot of people are work, uh, talking about it, writing in papers, but uh, it kind of uh, doesn't go too far uh, other than talking. So this uh, presentation is about uh, my attempt of trying doing this uh, uh, partial uh, generalization, so optimizing this process of generalizing by trying to reduce that one. Okay. So in order to do that, so you want to generalize not the full that set, but only those parts uh, which have uh, uh, changed, right? Because if you do that, you do not have to generalize uh, say all life here. Uh, if the changes have been only in, uh, uh, say, the world, right? So what do we have to do? Simple things, but these are very uh, important ones. So we have to identify uh, the objects uh, which are being uh, uh, generalized, uh, which have changed, right? uh, But it does not end there, because as I said, generalization is the taking object and something around it, right? to find uh, conflicts and create some uh, morphed uh, objects. So you have to see which objects around have an impact uh, on those objects which, which have uh, changed. And if you have a changed object, you have to take something around it. And uh, this could uh, cascade uh, uh, large distances. That's the uh, complexity, right? And you also have to take into account uh, uh, which attributes uh, are important for your visualization, right? For example, if you have uh, roles uh, uh, and uh, you have, I don't know, say, uh, surface uh, information change, but that's not displayed on your generalized map, then you can ignore such, uh, uh, such a change, right? And uh, how can we identify uh, the changes? Well, in open map, it is uh, simple because each change is uh, recorded, so we can easily uh, identify what has changed. Uh, if we have access to a database in which uh, people are actually editing the data, so of course we either already have information of uh, history, or we have to add it. So usually it's pretty simple, just adding some triggers. Uh, so a complex thing, the most complex uh, way would be if we do not have that information, then we would have to take old data sets, the new data set, and uh, uh, compare rows and see what has uh, uh, changed. But uh, whatever the way, we have to identify the objects which have changed and check what is important for our recalculation. Right? Now what, is, uh, uh, what do we get here? As I say, generalization means that the uh, uh, neighboring objects are also important for us. Right? So, for example, if we are using the uh, doing amalgamation, basically if we are merging a number of polygons into one polygon, even we do not touch and so right? Imagine, let's say, you have uh, two forests uh, and uh, there's a small gap between them. So, in some scales, you just want to merge them into one. Right? So, if one part of uh, that later generalized uh, merged object is changing, we have to recalculate both. Right? This needs to be a little bit for uh, selection. For example, in some small scales, uh, some objects do not fit, yeah? you would remove some of the objects. So if one object which was selected as being displayed is removed from the initial dataset, then generalization would have to be recalculated to those objects which have previously been removed, but uh, have not changed in the original uh, dataset. Right? So it's more or less with typification. So later I'll go to uh, more specific example on actually simple example that you should uh, display a concept uh, uh, more clearly, I, I think. So of generalizing, uh, generalizing the uh, building. Right? So let's see here we have for uh, more or less initial data, right? And then for some smaller scale, little mid scale, uh, we want to uh, leave for all characteristic of building. It should be square, but uh, uh, you have to imagine that that part uh, you be looking from a further distance, uh, so this image is not suitable, right? Because it will just too grainy. So there we can see that we have uh, 
uh, much less buildings than we have uh, in this uh, initial one, right? Because uh, we have to increase the buildings so that it would be visible on the final map, right? And because they have been increased, not all of the buildings fit, right? This means that we have to remove some of those buildings. And I'll think about what I said, is that only some of those buildings are there. So changing one building here, it means that we have to calculate all the buildings which are close to one another, right? Depending on what is uh, the scale we are calculating to. So this is the problem of uh, uh, identifying which parts of the initial data set have to be uh, generalized. So what uh, we do here is uh, we calculate uh, clusters, right? So let's say if uh, uh, we see that uh, we calculate what is uh, the distance uh, generalizing the have of one building to have impact uh, to another building, and we calculate the uh, clusters of that size. Right? So here we have buildings and we have four clusters uh, identified, meaning that if anything changes in this cluster, we would have to recalculate all here, but not in other clusters, right? And uh, this was actually not only uh, written as a presentation, but implemented uh, and tested. So in this case, uh, under these clusters, we have uh, simply si simple version of uh, uh, clustering everything, so all the different uh, scales. So basically, what you see here is this uh, gray one is initial development of the building, and for another scale, and for another scale. So everything is in the, uh, in one cluster, so it will be more simple to uh, calculate. This is just for you to understand how those clusters would look. So on uh, some uh, uh, Suburban uh, places, uh, the cluster should be smaller, but for uh, cities, so densely uh, built up for areas, so the cluster could be uh, very large. It's meaning that if something changes here, we you would have to recalculate all of that uh, because of this impact of one change to another. Right? So, uh, if we can identify such clusters which are influence, so our process of generalization goes uh, like this. So, So we do the initial generalization, which is exactly the same as uh, we do without this process. But what we do after that is we calculate those clusters, which is not as just shown, right? So after some time, we have data update. Right? So data has updated. What we do is we identify which clusters are and uh, call it Right, so which clusters we would have to recalculate. So every object in generalized data set uh, which goes under those clusters is deleted. And we take all the objects in initial data set, change one, also under those clusters, and we calculate only those. Right? And we get new data. And then out of that, we recalculate the, those place, change places, the clusters. Uh, again. And after that, the process repeats indefinitely uh, again and again. The point here is that this initial long generalization is replaced with a shorter one uh, here. Okay? <coughs> so, for example, if we have those initial uh, clusters and we have a changed uh, object here, so it will have no impact on existing clusters. Nothing has to be recalculated from existing one. Uh, of course, after generalization, you would have a new cluster here. Right? Here, you have to recalculate this cluster to be increased. In this case, you have to recalculate all the clusters, and probably they would merge into uh, one. Okay, you also have to take into account that. Uh, Depending on what is an operation of generalization, we might have to take into account other objects which are not the objects we are actually generalizing. Right? For example, buildings at some scales will be defining buildings, which would mean that you change the building into some square, 
and you want to turn it uh, towards the closest uh, process. Right? This means that even if the buildings haven't changed, but if a road which is close enough to one of the cluster has changed, we would have to tag those clusters as dirty and we'll have to recalculate. Right? Because if a road was one had one shape, now it has another shape. It could be that in the resulting building TP fitness turns slightly uh, differently. Right? Uh, and now, so as I said, this was implemented to see if it actually uh, works and get some uh, metrics. So how did we test if uh, it works uh, fine? Uh, so we were running uh, two data sets in parallel. One was doing the all day, doing full digitalization. And on separate tables, we are calculating incrementals, so the one described by this uh, uh, process. Right, and after that, uh, we'll be checking what is the difference between those two calculated uh, data sets and checking if there are any problems uh, for fine tuning the distances and uh, uh, until we get the same geometries by both uh, methods. Right, and this is uh, the result. So um, you can see that this long one is the time it takes to do the whole generalization. And the time horizon will be because it was run on a live Nefane and an open map for the server, so it could have some additional loads to do. But you see, mostly it is uh, close to one and a half hour it takes to generalize, generalize all buildings in Nefane. Uh, and this incremental one is, see, one minute, two minutes, things like that. So it not only speed up uh, generalization of buildings, but does a dramatic difference. Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as I said, this was for buildings. So it works for buildings, it would work for uh, water bodies which are, which do not spread through the whole country, like, uh, no, some. Uh, reservoirs uh, or lakes which are close to an oven and some on smaller scales are uh, amalgamated. But this, uh, this approach uh, specific would not work for roads because those would span the uh, whole country usually, unless you could think about like uh, maybe separating roads uh, which have the same number uh, as having smaller objects. Uh, and the same would, work, would not work for uh, railways or rivers. We would have to think about something like splitting them uh, in order to calculate this uh, partial generalization. Right? And um, mm, possibilities for further improvements is we could uh, later split our uh, clusters for some natural uh, boundaries, so maybe some large uh, rivers, uh, or other things which could mean that clusters are separate. And as I said, currently this cluster makes uh, uh, all of the calculated uh, different uh, uh, digitalized uh, data sets uh, dirty, so we have to calculate everything. Uh, but we could improve that uh, simply uh, by doing this calculation of clusters for each uh, resolution separately. This could mean that we do not have to recalculate uh, everything. So this is basically it. Yeah, this is what I wanted to show you. Thank you. Well, I want to say thank you because I had no idea what generalization was 20 minutes ago, but that was just a <laughs> wonderful presentation to explain that to somebody who doesn't understand anything. But let me ask you several questions that have uh, come in from the audience, and quite a few. So let's start at the top, and you can read them up there as well. But uh, do you have a project? Do you work with clients to carry out generalizations? Is this something that you and your company do? No, not yet. Okay, <laughs> so potential uh, clients? I'm actually writing the, I don't know if you can call it a scientific paper <laughs> about it, and we'll see what turns out of that. Okay, so we have a potential client in the audience. Excellent. Uh, I'm going to skip the next one just for a second. Uh, we'll wrap that one up, wrap up, up with that one. But the second one, is it really helpful to increase building size and selective random cells, etc.? 
Uh, yeah, this is uh, the usual question because uh, when I display it uh, that way, it looks like uh, that uh, right hand side uh, data set is uh, worse, like uh, decreased the quality. But as I said, you have to understand that you are looking uh, at it from a further distance. And if you do not increase the size of the buildings, that instead of the buildings, you will see some, you know, like sandy, grainy uh, something, some, some blur. Would not uh, like uh, cartography is communicating something to the final user, right? So if you want to communicate that this is an area of buildings, so it has to be not green, but some something which represents building to our mind, which is some square things. So you have to increase them so that you can see square buildings, not uh, even if it's fewer buildings, not the correct ones, but communication is buildings. Okay, so that picture on the right, we can imagine in the real world, would have been shrunken down, so yes. that you would have yes. a different uh, level of... of right. if, you, if you want, you can go to top of dot open map LP, and that uh, uses this algorithm, and you would see if you decrease uh, uh, the scale, you would see those uh, buildings uh, changing, uh, defying the simplifying, and uh, probably that would be more clear to understand how it works. How is this specific building generalization working in cities? Uh, as I said, in, in cities, uh, your cluster would be larger, so the change of buildings in cities would mean more recalculation, uh, but still it would uh, skip for uh, recalculating uh, buildings outside of the cities. And so when you do this recalculation, what happens when uh, the clusters merge in the, in the recalculation? Uh, as there was an example, uh, it works just fine. You could have two clusters. If you add a building which kind of after that merges those two, it's, it's fine because you would delete all the data on both clusters and you would, as I said, recalculate after generalization of clusters. And instead of two previous or I don't know, three or four previous clusters, you would have one merge one. So this is taking into account, it works. And, it's and on the flip side, is it possible as a result of recalculation to break up a large cluster into smaller ones? Uh, yes, it could be, for example, because a building no longer if that building which uh, previously merged those clusters into larger one is removed, then of course those clusters would split into smaller ones. Okay. So do you see a need to generalize OSM objects in the Lithuanian OSM map? Yeah, this yeah. is what we are already doing. Yeah, so this is already happening. Okay, thank you. And finally, there's a recommendation uh, for you. Are you aware that uh, Jochen Kopf has been working on OSM generalization? And are you communicating on that? If so, please not. Uh, let's see, I'm, I'm following that discussion. I saw it because I see everything, uh, I check everything which has board generalization. But uh, currently in OSM, I know two people, uh, yeah, I open this kind of two and a half people who got me who are actually interested in that uh, generalization uh, thing. So it's not, not too, too many people. I'm following that, but uh, so far they are not talking about the thing which I, um, Doing and talking here. Okay. 